This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today, we'll look at this paper published in September, where NRPT reduces markers of hepatic inflammation in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in a double-blinded, placebo-controlled clinical trial. NRPT is a combination of nicotinamide riboside, an NAD precursor, and terastilbene, a resveratrol-like molecule which activates SIRT1. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, is a buildup of fat in the liver without any identifiable source, such as excessive alcohol consumption. It is on a path to be the most frequent cause of chronic liver disease. The trial was a six-month, randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled clinical trial using a product which combined nicotinamide riboside and terastilbene. It involved 111 adults with NAFLD. There were three arms, a placebo, one dose of NRPT, and a double dose of NRPT. NRPT was safe and well tolerated. The primary outcome was reduction in hepatic fat fraction, basically the amount of fat in the liver. There was no significant change seen in this. However, there were some predefined secondary outcomes related to liver health, such as ALT, GGT, which did significantly decrease in the NRPT1 group. A dose-dependent effect was not observed in the NRPT2 group. Their conclusion is that NRPT is safe and may help lower markers of liver inflammation. A bit more detail on the trial. The trial was for six months, and the NRPT1 group had 250 milligrams of NR and 50 milligrams of terastilbene every day, while the NRPT2 group had twice that, 500 milligrams of NR and 100 milligrams of terastilbene. Here is the table of results of the primary and secondary endpoints. These columns are the placebo, NRPT1, and NRPT2 groups. And the results for each of the outcomes, hepatic fat fraction, the percentage of the liver made of fat, fatty liver index, a measure based on waist circumference, BMI, triglycerides, and GGT, HOMA IR, a measure of insulin sensitivity, and HOMA B, of pancreatic beta cell function, and finally, HSCRP, a measure of inflammation. And the p-value for the results of these in each group. None of these values was less than 0.05, showing no significant difference. As mentioned, there were also some other outcomes which were defined at the beginning of the trial. The first is alanine transaminase, or ALT a common marker for liver health. This was significantly lowered for the NRPT1 group, but not the NRPT2 group. Also, gamma glutamyl transferase, or GGT, another marker of liver health, where lower is better. Again, this was significantly improved in the NRPT1 group, but in this case also in the NRPT2 group, though the standard deviation was large, meaning a wide range of results. The spartate transaminase, or AST, tended to be lower in the NRPT1 group, but did not reach significance. Just to note that there was also a reduction in the liver enzymes in the placebo group, as shown here, something that we will come back to later. The primary endpoint that the authors hoped for was reduced fat in the liver, as measured by the hepatic fat fraction or the fatty liver index, but neither of these were significantly approved. It seems that the randomization made the placebo group have a significantly higher liver fat percentage, which then decreased during the trial. 
If they only looked at participants with less than 20% fat, there was a significant decrease in the HFF and the FLI. Based on this analysis, the hepatic fat fraction and the fatty liver index both improved significantly for those in the NRPT1 group, which started with less than 27% HFF. This is a post hoc analysis of the data and does not follow the original randomization, so needs to be viewed with that in mind. One question that these results raise is why were the results of NRPT1 group significant, while those of NRPT2 were not? They had some suggestions for this. Possibly the extra NR increased the levels of nicotinamide, which inhibited the effect of terastilbene as a SIRT1 activator, as high levels of nicotinamide have been shown to inhibit SIRT1. All the terastilbene dose exceeded the peak efficiency. A third option is that the trend towards lower AST and ALT in the placebo group, as we saw earlier, masked the effect of NRPT. And finally, it's possible that the observed result in the NRPT group 1 was just due to chance. Although it would have been great to see more clear-cut results in terms of reduction in liver fat, the results did show that an NAD booster and a SIRT1 activator were able to lower key markers of liver inflammation. Based on this, the authors suggest larger trials to see if NRPT can help in the treatment of NAFLD.